Today I'm going to share how I got a British accent and also some tips on how to lose your native accent if you want to sound more like a native speaker of an English language. A couple of months ago I did a video on how I became fluent in English and also sharing my top 10 tips for speaking English as a foreign language. I am originally from Brazil and I'm just a regular English student like all of you out there learning English but I thought I would come today and share with you some more English speaking tips because you seem to have liked my previous video. If you're more advanced with your English, you're probably starting to think about accents and thinking about what accents you like the most and what accent you would like to have. A lot of people don't have much choice because they end up learning the accent that their teachers have, but I will show you that it's possible to revert that accent and actually end up with an accent that you want to have. I learned American English because all of my teachers back in Brazil were American or had American accents, but then I moved to the UK and I ended up with a British accent because of lots of different factors together. One of them, which I think is probably the most important, is the fact that I ended up marrying a British guy and I kind of ended up with the same or similar accent to his and his family. So my husband is Welsh and his whole family is Welsh and I ended up with kind of like a Welsh accent. A lot of people here in the UK do think that I'm Welsh. They identify my accent as being more similar to Welsh and very, very rarely I get people saying that I'm Brazilian because of my accent. So I think I've been quite successful in losing the Brazilian accent when I speak English. I'm not saying that that's what everybody wants. A lot of people want to keep their native accents whilst they're speaking English and that's totally fine. So this video is not for you, but if you want to lose and sound more like a native speaker of English, if you want to lose your native accent, then I hope these tips will be helpful for you. So starting on how I got a British accent, for a very, very long time, I had a strong American accent. Then I came to the UK on holiday and I fell in love with the country, with the culture, and most importantly, with the accent. And I literally made my life goal to sound like that because I wanted to sound like that when I spoke English. So when I went back home, instead of focusing on all of the things I was focusing with American accents, I kind of switched my a focus to British accent. So I would watch more British TV series, I would listen to more British music and try to get myself familiar with the sounds of the British people, with how the different accents in the British language sounded. And that's how it started. But I would say that my British accent didn't become what it is now until I moved to the UK and probably for about six months or I'd say six months to a year into living in the UK, my accent was still a mixture of um, American accent and British accent. It was only when I moved to the UK um, and I was dating who is now my husband, but at the time was my boyfriend. And obviously we were spending a lot of time together and I was kind of absorbing his accent. Even words from the most basic things that I had to do every day, like work. My American accent was telling me to say that, work. But then I had to train my brain to say it, work. Now I don't even have to think about it. That's just how my brain processes when I see that word written on a piece of paper. And if I wanna say it in an American accent, I actually have to try and think about it logically and know how it's gonna sound. So it's quite like a bizarre thing that happened to me, the fact that I've been able to change completely from an American accent to a British accent. Now I'm gonna share a few tips that helped me get rid of my native accent when I'm speaking in English. Obviously, I still have my native accent when I speak in Portuguese, but I think now that I have been living in the UK for, gosh, coming up to seven years now, I can safely say that I don't think I have a Brazilian accent, or at least a not a very uh, easy to detect accent. If anything, a lot of people are quite confused and they don't really, they can't really place where I'm from, which I think it's a good sign because it shows that my accent, my native accent doesn't come through quite as strong as some other people. So hopefully this will be helpful to you. I have a mini list here of things that I want to talk about so I don't forget. My first tip is to copy. Copy, copy, copy. Don't be afraid to copy people who have the accent that you want. In this case, we're talking about a British accent, so don't be afraid to copy other British accents that you hear. 
You're not going to get a British accent or any other accent for that matter just by thinking about it. If you have a foreign accent or if you have your native language in your brain and that's the only language you know, naturally you're going to end up talking in that same pattern, in the same rhythm as your natural native language and every language has a different rhythm, every language has a different pattern and ways in which words linked together sound. The best way to do that is either with friends that have that accent, that British accent, or listening to music or TV programs or on YouTube. There are lots of people on YouTube with British accents that are very easy to listen. And all you have to do is just listen to them, maybe pause and then practice yourself and then press play and carry on. And just do this regularly. You don't have to do it every day, but just make sure you keep up. My second tip is to forget how the words sound in your native language. That is a big trap and that's the best way to not sound like a native speaker of English at all because it's very tempting. So, some words are quite similar um, to lots of different languages uh, and I find that Portuguese, Spanish, Italian, English all have very similar construction of words and that kind of like makes you feel a false sense of security. You think that you know how that word's gonna sound, but then in a different language, it sounds different. For example, like just something that came to mind, the word president in English, in Portuguese, it's spelt very similarly, just with an E at the end, but it sounds quite different. In Portuguese, it sounds like presidente, and in English, it sounds like president. So look at the words and understand the meaning of them, maybe link into your native language, but don't try and copy how that word sounds in your native language into English. If you're not sure, always look that word up. The best tool that you could possibly have is free and it's on Google, it's called Google Translate. You just put a word in there and there's a little sound button there that you can click to hear how that word sounds. It's just good to have handy. My third tip is to create your own British environment. What I mean is if you're not in Britain, then you can still get uh, immersed in that British language wherever you are. The easiest way to do that is to have something playing on the background, either music or a TV show or people talking in British English. Um, YouTube has lots and lots and lots of content. You could have a playlist going on for hours on end and you don't have necessarily to be sitting down and paying attention to everything that's going on, but I'm sure some words will enter your brain just by default, just by listening to it every day. You could be doing your ironing, you could be doing your laundry, you could be doing maybe some tidying or whatever you could be doing that's a boring task. Just have something playing on the background that makes you feel like you're surrounded by British people the same way that you would feel as if you were here in the UK where I am walking down the street or going into a shop and hearing people speak British um, English all the time. That's how much easier it is to learn the language in the country. It's because you're surrounded by it. So Create your own little British environment wherever you are and try to listen to that accent as much as possible. In a way, that's how children learn accents from birth because they are living in a house or in an environment where their parents, their grandparents, uncles, aunties all speak the same language. And children take a long time to start speaking, but they're absorbing that all of that language from the day that they're born and they carry on and then they start saying these words. So it's quite a simple way, but it's something that's proven to be effective. It's to kind of surround yourself with the language and if even if you can't be in a place where there are people speaking around you, then create that place wherever you are. My fourth tip is to practice the tricky sounds and that could be anything depending on what your native language is but I just know that the most common ones are the th sound like mouth, birthday, the all of these seem to be quite commonly uh, difficult for people of all backgrounds, all languages to speak so make sure you practice those sounds more than you would practice any other sounds and also remember that in the British language the letter R doesn't usually make a rotating sound like a r. And I know that a lot of languages, including Portuguese, have that r sound, and it's very hard to not say it. If I were to say the word hard with a Brazilian accent using the r, I'd have to say hard. 
and that would make immediately me sound foreign. For the TH sound, my main tip is that it doesn't sound like an F, so it's not birthday, it's birthday. And the way that you distinguish that by saying is that the TH sound, your tongue goes in between your teeth and your mouth is quite closed, so it's quite small, so you go th. And with the F sound, you're, you're literally just blowing air through your mouth and your tongue is not between your teeth, so you're just going th, th which is very different to th. So just practice that, sounds, uh, that sound and or other sounds that are as tricky as the TH sound and that will make your English flow a lot better. My fifth tip is to group similar words that sound the same and learn them all in a bundle. I know it can be quite overwhelming because vocabulary in the English language is huge and you're never going to learn all of the, the words and even native speakers of English don't know all of the words. So just group words that look the same and they'll probably sound the same. There will be exceptions here and there but most of the times you'll get it right. Things like hand will sound similar to band and will sound similar to land. So, you know, just try and group these this, these lands, these words together and it will reduce the amount of vocabulary that you have to learn in terms of pronunciation. My sixth tip is to find your inspiration. Find who you want to sound like. And I know that sounds a bit silly and sounds a bit like, you know, a fangirl kind of thing, but it's not. It really is useful to find someone that you want to sound like and try to copy or goes back to my first tip and imitate how that per person sounds. Some people want to have a London accent, other people want to have a Welsh accent, others want to have a Northern accent, others want to have the Queen's accent. So they're all very different and although they all come under the same British accent label, um, they're very different. So find what accent you want to have and try to find people that have that accent and copy them. Your brain will get quite confused if you're listening to people that have very different accents because words will sound different depending on where you're from in, um, in Britain. So try to focus on one particular accent. It's not always easy. I have to say I find the Scottish accent particularly harder to understand um, even after living here for seven odd years and even knowing that I can understand most people that I meet I still struggle to, to understand the Scottish accent and uh, yeah so for me I've always wanted to have an accent that was quite mainstream English and I ended up with a Welsh accent which is completely fine by me and I love it. The reason why I really like the Welsh accent, especially for people who are not native speakers of English, is that it's very um, pronounced and it's very kind of easy to understand. From my experience, I think the Welsh tend to linger a little bit more in each syllable. So that makes it the well, uh, it makes the Welsh accent a little bit slower, which in turn makes it easier for people who are not native speakers of English to understand. So that's my favorite accent is the Welsh accent, but I also like the Queen's accent. <laughs> but that's some, I don't think that's something I'll ever, ever achieve because it's just very posh. My seventh tip is try to figure out why you're not sounding like a native speaker. And that can be more complicated than it sounds because basically what you're going to be doing is listening to separate words or individual words and seeing how it sounds when you say it and how it sounds when a native speaker say it and then seeing where you're going wrong. Not necessarily that speaking with an accent is going wrong, but if you're trying, trying to correct that, then maybe see where that is making you different to the accent that you're trying to achieve. A lot of the times will be because you're relying on the way that your brain remembers your native language and some of the times will be because you've heard that word said with a different accent now you're trying to, to learn a British accent for example and it doesn't quite match. So try and figure out what is it that is not quite matching with the accent you want to achieve and keep trying and copying until you get it perfectly right. My eighth tip is that not every word will sound like what they look like when they're written. And that can create a big false sense of security for a lot of foreign speakers. You can see something written on a piece of paper and think that you know how to say that, 
but you might not. So don't just assume that that word is gonna sound how it looks. Always make sure you double check if you're not sure. One thing that I always remember is my husband, um, he's very good at kind of teaching me without making me feel like I've made a mistake or making me feel embarrassed. Um, and uh, he used to teach me how to say the word of, which is basically the letters O and F. And to me, that would instinctively sound like off. And many times we'd be in the middle of a conversation and I would be saying the word off wrongly and he would find the best and the most appropriate moment to kind of correct me and then my brain instinctively started to pick up whenever I, I had that word coming up in the sentence I would immediately instinctively think it's not off it's of and then when other people were talking and I could hear that of being said I take notice of it now and I kind of register every time of of so words like that don't necessarily sound like they look like. Another word that I can think of, of, <laughs> is the word southern. And I wouldn't necessarily say that southern would sound like it sounds. I'd say that it would be, if I were to read it and kind of try and say it's the way that I see it, I'd try and say southern because it's south and then earn. That's something to be aware of. And if you're trying to speak like a native speaker, don't just assume that the words on paper will sound exactly like they do. I know that that makes life much harder, but that's just one of those things. My ninth tip is that listening is more important than anything when you're trying to perfect an accent, even more important than speaking. Because if you're not listening, you will not speak with the accent that you want. If you're not paying attention to how something sounds, you're not gonna get to the level of fluency or maybe not get to the accent that you want. So always make sure that you do a lot more lis listening than reading than anything when you're trying to perfect an accent. And my last tip is that you don't have to spend a lot of money to perfect the accent that you want. I know you've probably spent a lot of money getting to the point where you have a good level of fluency in English because you have English lessons and then that goes on for years and years and years sometimes. But nowadays there's so many resources that are free online and YouTube literally is your best friend. I will leave a playlist below that you can just go and watch on repeat or have it handy when you need. And that playlist consists of lots and lots of lessons um, or maybe just general tips and tricks from people who are native speakers. And that can just give you a place to start if you wanna learn a British accent or if you wanna get rid of your native accent. So hopefully that playlist will be useful to you. But even if you don't find it on YouTube, there are lots of places on the internet, lots of websites that do free lessons. Just make sure that you're listening, that you're paying attention and that you're practicing. Don't just be a passive learner, be an active learner. Don't just listen, but actually say the words because you'll never know how you sound like until you say the words out loud. That in itself can be quite a big problem if you're not too confident with your English speaking, but that's the first step to becoming fluent and to having the accent that you want is getting rid of that confidence block, getting rid of that fear of being mocked and misunderstood and slowly getting there. I'm not saying you're gonna get from zero to a hundred from, to, from today to tomorrow, but you'll definitely get there if you're dedicated and if you make sure that you're putting your priorities right. So if your priority is to learn English and get that good accent, then try and put your shyness to the back of your mind and go, you know what, I'm gonna do this. Start in your bedroom, then move on to your living room where a few more people can hear you, then move on to maybe your classroom, then go out in the real world and speak for all to hear and you'll be absolutely fine, trust me. No one really cares that much how many mistakes you make in English. They might care for a second, but they won't care for more than that. So just remember that if you're trying to learn English or if you're starting to learn English and perfecting your accent. I hope these tips were helpful if you're trying to learn British English. If you enjoyed this video and if you found it useful, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you can see more videos from me. If there are any other videos that you would like to see on the topic of English speaking, please leave your comments below and your suggestions. I'd love to do more of these videos. I'm just not really sure how much more I can be of use because I'm only a student like you guys. I'm not a teacher, I'm not qualified. I just want to be able to help from my experience 
comments. So if there's anything that you think you could, uh, you'd find helpful, then let me know and I'll make sure to do a video for you. I hope you're having a lovely day and I'll see you very soon. Bye.